Hey guys, um, so a little while back I did a tutorial on uh, making particle effects and how to do them in Stingray and how to do all sorts of different little particle effects. And it's a really good tutorial and I didn't want to have to basically redo the entire tutorial. So I wanted to show you something that has changed in the new versions of Stingray and it's the new billboard system. So this, uh, this tutorial is going to end up being like an addendum to that tutorial set. This way you can kind of uh, be able to work from that tutorial still, but uh, only one system changed. So I wanted to make sure that you knew how to handle that new system if you wanted to use it. So uh, what I'm going to be doing is going to basically go through the new billboard system. And what we're going to do is we're going to recreate this fire down here uh, that we have going right there. And we're going to do it in the new particle system. So this one, if we uh, end up looking at that particle, uh, will be the old fire. So let me just find that really quick. So <clears throat> if we look at the fire, we'll see that it's using this old deprecated uh, billboard system. So uh, to make this you know, kind of work for us, what I want to do is I just want to show you that we can do the same thing, but we're going to use the new system instead. So here we have the old fire, and what we're going to do is we're going to recreate it with the new fire. So here we have the new billboard, and I'm just going to place that on the screen here. Uh, oops, I just did that totally wrong. And I'm going to grab the new fire and I'm going to place the new fire on our screen here. And we're going to do effectively the exact same thing. We're just going to be doing it um, with the new billboard instead. Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's get started and let's take a look. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go file, new level. And we're not going to use this level that I just totally broke. And we're going to start from here. Okay, so let's take a look at the new billboard first. And we're going to just kind of do a quick run through of what's actually happening. So here I've just got an emitter rate, a size, and the actual uh, visualizer. But you'll notice that in the visualizer, there's not the old tool set. Okay, we're just calling this one material, which is right in here. So in the new system, all of your controls for your UV animations and everything else are going to really happen here, okay, um, in, our, in our material setup. So the material is going to be the, the driving factor of the new billboard system, which is in a lot of ways a lot more clean and gives us a lot more flexibility. And I'm just going to show you one of those flexibility paths that we can take, okay? So um, basically what we're going to be doing a UV flipbook uh, to really make our particle base, okay? So, um, and don't get confused by this. We're gonna, we're gonna handle this in a moment. Um, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what actually changed. So in the old system, if we look at that again, we'll see that when we look at this guy, our UV animation actually contained a lot of stuff. It had a frames per second. It had our, um, our start point. It had our looping. It had um, a lot of different things. And then the actual billboard itself, um, you know, we had a lot more to do here, right? And it was all controlled within the particle effect. Uh, whereas now, almost all of that control is gonna be handled within our material. Um, whereas our material in the old one was just a very simple, non, kind of a non-controllable uh, material. It was all driven from the particle. Whereas now, and that's kind of not the case, where, where we've got almost no information in the particle effect, and almost all of the information is being driven from our, uh, from our, um, our, our actual material. Okay, so our, our, our material itself is what is going to be driving everything in the new system. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, let's get started. Um, what I'm going to start with is I'm just going to create a new billboard. Okay, so the first thing, I'm, and you know what, let's, let's start in a clean folder so we can just kind of see what actually is going on. So we're going to go create folder. And in the folder, I am going to call it uh, new particle billboard. You can call it whatever you would like. I'm going to call it new particle billboard. And yes. Okay. So I've got this folder, new particle billboard. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go create and I'm gonna go particle effect, okay? Now, one of the other things that has changed is that it won't automatically create a material when you do this, okay? So we're gonna call this particle effect and we're gonna call this new, uh, I don't know what we should, what should, we should call this. Uh, let's call this fire underscore new. It really doesn't make a difference what we call it. You can name it whatever you would like. 
um, and we can go ahead and take a look at that. But notice that it didn't actually create a material here, okay? So that's one of the new things. It's a, it's a little difficult to get used to because you don't have that material, and I'm gonna show you a trick as to how to get to that material in a moment. Um, but for now, just realize it's not gonna auto-create you a material anymore because it doesn't necessarily depend upon it. Um, there's a, a built a one built into core, which it references back to. And when you wanna create your own, it can be a little tricky to find that that particle so uh, or that material. So I'm gonna show you a trick as to how to get to it and how to grab it and put it into your own project so you can edit it, okay? So, um, so yeah, so here we have our system, just as we always did. And here you can see that it automatically attaches this new billboard visualizer. And here you can see that it's giving you that, um, that particle default, okay? So that's the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna go to that, that particle Default, and this is what I was saying. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you a trick as to how to grab that and put it into your project, so that you can use it in the future, um, which isn't quite so obvious. So what happens is we can use this go to resource, okay? And you're gonna see that it's gonna send you back to Volcano Core, which is where your Stingray is installed. Then it's gonna look in Stingray Renderer and Shaders. But when you first go there, it's gonna be a blank page, okay? And that's because you don't have all of your ability to see everything. So in your little gear over here, we can say show all files, okay? So when we say show all files, we can now see all the different files that are in this folder. And the one that we care about is the one that is actually highlighted which is going to be particle default and then it's material okay so what we want to do now is go right click uh, show an explorer here so show an explorer and we can double click on our shaders and we can grab our particle default material and we're going to go right click and we're going to go copy okay so now it's copied in our clipboard we can close that now and now we want to navigate back to our volcano uh, or whatever your project route is and we're going to go content and in my case we're going to go effects and we're gonna go new particle billboard. And now here what we wanna do is go right click and we wanna go, um, I'm sorry, grab anything in here and we're gonna go right click and show an explorer. Okay, and that's gonna take us to our folder here. And now what we wanna do is just go right click and paste. Okay, so now we've got that particle default material here and we can rename that to whatever we would like. So let's name it um, new, uh, I'm sorry, fire underscore, new i'm just going to name it the same as my particle so that it's nice and relative okay so fire underscore new and now we have access to that particle material and now we can go ahead and turn off show all files and we will just see the two pieces that we need okay so um so that's basically the easy way to get to that resource and put it into your project now once we're here let's go ahead and set that material in our particle billboard so grab our our particle editor and let's grab the billboard visualizer and instead of using this default one which we can't really edit what we're going to do is we're going to kill that and we're going to drag our fire new material into that resource okay so now we can actually edit that material and we can make this work so now that that's all set what we want to do is just take a quick look at our material and see what the default kind of set us up with okay so let's go ahead and open up this material and let's just kind of see what's happening here. Now, you'll notice that there are some interesting things with this type of material. Um, the first thing is that we're using this special um, base called particle base. So if you were to wanted to create this on the fly and you didn't want to use uh, the method that I just showed you where you're copying and pasted, um, you might be like, well, how do I set up this, this whole particle? So I'm just going to show you the base right here. It's going to be add and we're going to go... Um, output and we, we would pick particle base so this is the base and this is necessary for any type of a particle okay so this is like kind of the root node of a particle uh, effect so anytime you want to create a particle material you need to use this particle base okay so that's the the first caveat now it came with that because we copied it from that that root um, which I would recommend you do, which is why I'm kind of showing you that method, because it makes it a little easier. Um, and there's a couple other things you would want to know, okay? So like the billboard size, notice that when you do the particle base, you have this input for particle size, okay? So you want that to be um, 
to be known, right? So we have to grab this other node, which is billboard size. Well, where do you get that from? So if we go into add, we will see that there's a new subsection called particles, okay? And here we can get a couple basic things like particle size, particle rotation, or I'm sorry, billboard size, billboard rotation, and billboard position. So these are all relative to our billboard, okay? And here we're gonna use the billboard size, which is what controls the size. And the reason you need that billboard size driven is when you're looking at your particle, so if we were to look at our particle editor, and look at the size, we can do things like scale over time and do all sorts of different things like initial size and all that stuff. Um, if you don't connect billboard size to here, you will not get that to happen. Um, and you won't have your particle effect work, okay? So any of those size inputs all drive this input, okay? So that's really kind of critical. Um, the other thing you'll notice is that we have a color, okay? So if we want this color to drive, off of this color, this is what you use. So this color zero is called a vertex color. And we get that under add, vertex inputs, and color zero. So if we wanted to drive that color, this is what you need. You need that unit or that node, okay? So then you can just connect the RGB to your base color and your alpha is necessary for the particle, um, the particles, uh, Alpha. So if you want to adjust opacity over time, this is this this alpha right here is going to drive that A quality. Okay. So just so you're aware, I just want you to know so that you can use this billboard effectively. All right. So we're going to actually end up overwriting all this, and we're going to use an input um, from our material that is going to drive these two. Okay. But for now, I just want you to know you know, that's how you're gonna handle it. Um, and if we wanted to just have a material, we could just have a material drive this. It doesn't really make a difference. We're actually gonna do a little more than just a material. We're gonna do a material with an animation, um, but that's actually a step further. So, uh, so yeah, so that's basically it. We have this billboard rotation, which as the billboard rotation suggests, is gonna rotate our billboard. This is gonna also be used in anything where we would put a rotate. So if we put a rotate node, in our um, in our particle like random right this random is going to drive this billboard rotation so this billboard rotation may or may not be critical to your particle but I just want you to know that uh, this rotation is driven from your uh, any of your rotation nodes okay so this will drive that okay so um, that's basically it. That's basically the long and the short of what we need to understand to get started. Uh, I just wanted you to kind of see where we were at. Okay, so for now, we're just gonna leave this as is, and we're gonna close this down, and let's start working with our actual, um, our particle to kind of get in into a spot where it's gonna be sort of useful to us. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is grab our particle uh, emitter, and we're gonna get rid of that rotation. We're not gonna need it. So we're gonna remove that, and we're just gonna uh, put this guy on screen. So let's go place and let's put it on screen. And now we can start editing it. So the first thing I know we're gonna want is to have this size a little bigger so we can actually see what's happening. And let's kind of zoom in a little bit. And we can see that we're still getting some rotation qualities. That's because I haven't saved yet. Uh, once I save, we should find that that will go away. Oops, I placed it twice. Let me delete that one and just move this guy a little bit to update it, and there we go. Okay, so now we're getting our billboard to present, and what we're gonna wanna do now is start to apply some of our materials. So let's jump into that material editor, and let's actually get started here a little bit. So, like I said, we're not gonna really use this color zero. Um, this is great if you want to just drive your color from your particle editor. So if you wanna drive your color, you can just go ahead and change your color to, I don't know, red, and save it. And we should be able to see that our particles are now red. And one thing that I wanna do is, and you shouldn't do this, you have, you have to use this specific function very carefully uh, because infinite lifetime can be extremely dangerous. Particles can just take up a lot of memory, and if you just keep them on all the time, uh, they can be a problem. Now it's useful, but you just wanna make sure that you do kill it if you um, are doing this in a game. So make sure you 
if you're going to turn on infinite lifetime, you have to actually manually destroy it. So make sure you destroy it properly uh, if you're going to go into infinite lifetime. I don't want to get into that too much, but just something you should be aware of. Infinite lifetime, uh, you know, can be a problem, especially if you're spawning lots of them. Uh, they won't ever die. So uh, even if your particle effect just does it, you know, one thing, it will still live in memory. So you have to make sure you destroy anything that's got this uh, particle lifetime uh, set to infinite. So we're going to just leave it like that for now because for our purposes we just want to see it kind of play back. Uh, and this will leave it up on our screen forever. So uh, that's what I, I kind of want for the moment. Um, and for something like a fire, that's going to be probably what we're going to do. We're going to spawn it once and just leave it on and that's fine. Uh, it's when you're spawning multitudes that you have to be careful with that infinite lifetime. Okay, so without further ado, let's, uh, let's move forward. So now what we want to do is go into our material itself and we're going to open this guy up and I'm just going to double click it. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of our color and we're just going to wipe that out. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace that with an input of a, um, of a sampling and we're going to go sample texture. Okay. So here's going to be our actual color. And what we're going to do is we're going to drive the base color off the RGB and we're going to drive the opacity. In this case, I'm going to drive it off of R because that will do the job for me. Uh, if you have an alpha channel on your sample texture, you can use A by double clicking this guy and pressing A and that will drive your opacity. But because I have a black background, I want to make sure that I'm just driving the opacity off of one of the RG, RG or B channels. So I'm just going to change this to the R channel. Okay. Um, because like I said, my, my material doesn't have uh, an alpha channel, so I'm just going to drive it like that. Okay. So uh, that's going to drive my opacity and my base color is going to be driven off the RGB. Now I need to have uh, the UV set up. So because this is going to be an animation, I'm going to go add utility flipbook. Okay. And the UV from the flipbook is going to be this RG which we're gonna drive into that UV, okay? So now we're pretty much set up. We're gonna set our FPS to whatever FPS we would like. In my case, I'm just gonna set it to 30, because I like, you know, 30 is a good solid number uh, for an animation. But if you really care about it being higher, you can set this to 60. It's really not gonna make much of a difference. Um, it's really the combination of these two that are gonna matter. So, you know, you can do whatever you'd like. Um, you'll just have to adjust your time differently. So we're gonna go, let's leave it at 60, fine. Um, and our time, We'll get to the time in a moment, actually. So the next thing we're going to need is our UV input. So for that, we're going to go add and we're going to go uh, vertex inputs and we're going to go text cord and text cord zero. OK, and we're going to drive the UV channel off our text cord zero. OK, so now that we have our, our UV set up, um, what we really need to do now is kind of take a look at our animation. Now, in my case, um, I believe it's five and five, so five rows and five columns. But let's go ahead and take a quick look. I'm just going to back out, and I'm going to go to my uh, uh, my textures folder, and I'm just going to take a look at this sheet. Okay, so so as we can see, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five rows, and one, two, three, four, five uh, columns, or actually five columns and uh, five rows. Okay, so um, so all we're gonna do is in our input here, we're gonna go five and five. Okay, now if you wanted to set this up dynamically, we could do that too. So this way you could use this same, um, the same template for just about any uh, animation. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. And this will just give us a little more flexibility. So if you had some that were five rows and five columns and some that were three rows and two columns or whatever you have, uh, this, this will be a good template that you can use uh, from now forward and it'll always work, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go add. So if we wanted to, yeah, so this is hard coded and now we're gonna make it soft coded so we can go ahead and adjust this um, anytime we want. So let's go ahead and go into input and material variable. And we're just gonna set this to rows. Okay, so let's call this rows. Oops. Rows and rows. And because this is gonna be a template that we'll use later on again, we'll just call that rows, okay? And we wanna set this to a vector, I mean a, a scalar input. And we're gonna set our max to something more reasonable like 15. 
and that should do it. So we have a minimum of zero and a maximum of 15. And we probably want to set that minimum actually to something like one. And we want to set our step size to one also because we never want a half step size. We don't want 1.5. We only want it to be you know, one or a, a solid whole number. So this step size will allow us to make sure that it'll only go in whole number increments, okay? So let's go ahead and save that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the same exact uh, uh, rows um, input, we're going to copy it, and we're going to paste it. Okay, so now we have another one, and we're going to drive this one into the columns, the rows into the rows, and the only thing we're going to have to do is change our rows to columns. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. And columns. Okay, so now we've got our rows and columns and now what will happen is, so let's just, uh, let's set our time. Actually, we have to add the time still. So let's just add the time. I wanted to show you really quickly what those do, but I'll do that in a moment. So we'll go uh, utility and we're going to go time. Uh, sorry, it's going to be input and time. Okay, so here we have our time input. And because we want to be able to control our time, uh, we're going to go ahead and do a little multiplier here. So um, actually, do we want to do that? Yeah, you know what, we'll just do the time direct. And we're going to make this uh, FPS a, uh, a we're going to we're going to adjust it by FPS instead. So we'll go ahead and grab the rows. And we're going to copy and paste that. And this will be our speed or our FPS. So FPS, and we're going to go FPS. I had done it a little differently the last time, but this will work actually a little bit cleaner. And I think it's going to be a nicer way to handle the problem. So we'll see. If it doesn't work, I'll go back to the time input uh, multiplier. So instead, so we're just going to go ahead and grab this R and plug that into our FPS. So we have FPS driving FPS. We have rows driving rows and we have columns driving columns, okay? And we should be pretty much set here. Um, now, let's take a look at our actual material now. So I'm just gonna select our particle editor and just go back to our, um, our material. So we're now gonna see that in this little list, we have our texture input, which is gonna be our billboard. We're gonna have this uh, FPS, which is gonna drive our speed. We're gonna have columns, which is gonna go ahead and be how many columns we want, and rows, which is gonna be our rows. So now we have all the necessary inputs for our, um, for our animation setup, okay? So we can actually close this now, and let's go ahead and do a test. So let's go back, and while I have, oh, let me just show you that really quick. So I do have my material selected, okay? And I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna to go to my textures and I'm gonna grab my fire animation, okay? And I'm gonna plug that into my texture, okay? And now when I hit save, we should find that if we go back to our particle system and we look at it, we should start to see something, but we don't. So something is not quite working the way it's supposed to yet. Let's, uh, let's find out what's happening here. So, oh, probably because we didn't set any rows or any columns. So let's go ahead and set this to um, something like 10. I'm sorry, uh, this is gonna be five and we're gonna go five and we're gonna go frames per second of 30, okay? And now we're gonna start to see our, our, um, our animation play, okay? So I did notice that we are not getting the slider to work properly, so let me take a look at that. Let's go uh, five again, and let's go save, and let's open up the shader graph really quick. So I think what we're gonna need to do is set this to slider, number slider, okay? So let's save that. Let's set our columns to number slider, and let's set our FPS to a number slider also. Um, what else did I see that was a problem? I didn't think there was any other problems. I think outside of that, it's actually working well. Oh, our frames per second, we weren't able to drive high enough. And that is gonna be because our max is not great enough. Okay, so let's set this to something more like 100. So we can really ramp that up in speed. And this one, we wanna set our increments of 0.01. Okay, so let's do that. So that should do it. 
And let's take a look again at our material slider. So I just want to make sure this is actually going. And yes, this is now working with increments of one. Okay, so notice now that we're not getting those point differences, which we don't want. Uh, instead, we're getting solid numbers. Okay, so now we can see that when we set it to five and five, which is what we know we need for this animation, um, we're gonna get the playback to work properly. So it's got the proper number of columns and the proper number of rows. It also has an adjustable FPS, which should increase or decrease our speed, which it does. So here we can see, I can crank it up to 100 FPS and it'll play it really fast or I can slide it way down and we should get very slow playback. Slow playback. Okay, so this is now working as expected. Um, and we should be pretty much rocking and rolling here. So let's just take a look at the material and see if there's anything else we can do to make this a little bit better. Okay, so the one thing that I was thinking is that we might wanna do is drive the emissivity. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's back these guys out a little bit to give us some room. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a multiply. So we're gonna go add math multiply. And we're gonna drive this into here. So we're gonna make this an RGB value, RGB. So I double click that line and said RGB. And we're now gonna add a scalar input, input and material variable. So we're gonna grab another scalar variable. So we're gonna go scalar and we're gonna set um, this to also to a slider, just because I personally like the sliders, they seem to work nicely. Um, and I'm gonna set my max to something like, uh, probably 30 will be plenty enough. Um, and I'm gonna leave the step size of what it is, okay? And now what we're gonna call this is, um, let's call this uh, emissive amount. Okay, and we can do that and we can copy and we're gonna paste it and we are going to paste it again, okay? So save and that should do it. We're gonna drive the red value into this B. So what happens is when you have a three value input and you go into a multiply or an add or anything else, it's gonna take whatever this single value is and multiply it against all three channels. So our red's gonna be bumped up, our green's gonna be bumped up, and our blue's gonna be bumped up in this case. So this is just a really nice way to easily control all the values. If we wanted to, we could set this to a vector input a vector three, in which case we could actually even hue the color, okay? So if we wanted to, we could, you know, we'll, we'll do that in a moment. I'll, I'll show you that as a, a little side note that we can kind of play with, all right? So we're gonna drive our emissivity into here and that should do it, okay? So now we should have the ability to increase the amount of brightness of our, uh, of our material, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and close this and let's take a look at our material again. And we should see now that we have this emissive amount, so we can drive that up. And as you can see, I can make that guy glow really bright, okay? So we can kind of play with that and get it to where we wanted it, all right? Now, um, as I was saying, I just wanted to not, not show you. If we wanted to drive this with a color, okay, we can actually drive this with a color. Um, it won't be as effective as doing what we're doing here where we get that nice brightness to pop up, but we can do some pretty cool stuff. Um, it's just a little harder to control. But if you wanted to also be able to control the tint of that brightness, we can do that. Um, and I'm gonna show you how. So let's go back into our material. And for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect this emissive amount, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another variable. Uh, we're gonna call this a input and material variable. And this time we're just gonna leave it as an RGB, okay? But what we'll do is we'll set it to a yeah, we can do it as a vector three and we can do it as a color, okay? And we're gonna save that. And we're gonna drive this into here instead. And for now, I'm just gonna call this uh, emissive tint, okay? And you know what, we can even do something even more clever in a moment. So emissive tint and emissive tint, okay? So now we've got an emissive tint, and we should find that when we look at our material, we can actually drive our color a little bit. And it's not quite working. Yeah, it's, it's working. It's just not super noticeable. So as you can see, um, as I get in here, you'll see that we're actually adjusting that emissive quality with a tint color instead. 
So we can see if we go white, it gets really bright. If we go black, it goes dark. And if we put this orange color, it starts to hue it with orange, okay? So one last thing that we can do to kind of drive this even further is we can now go into our material and let's refactor our emissive amount again, okay? So let's drag all this stuff back one more time. So let's grab these guys and drag them back. And let's go ahead and add a multiply. Math, multiply. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna now drive the color that we've tinted it with into this emissive amount. And now what we're gonna get is the ability to drive it even brighter uh, because the colors won't really let us br drive it brightly. So here we can control now with the emissive amount, we can make it super bright, but with the emissive tint, we can tint it to a color, okay? So now we're getting a green hue off of it or a reddish hue or a purple hue or whatever we would like to do. And if you wanna take this one step further, what we can even do is one last thing. So let's open up our shader graph again and let's try driving our color with this sample texture adjustment as well. So here what we're doing is we're, we're kind of, um, you know, branching off and doing only the emissivity on the bottom. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take from this multiply, not the emissive amount, because we don't wanna make it brighter in our base color. I mean, you could, but I don't think that that would work the way we want it to. But what we're gonna do is where we, after the emissive tint, we're gonna go ahead and plug that into our base color, okay, and hit save. And now what we should find is that we're actually getting that emissive tint to really take its place and, uh, and, and really drive those colors. So now we should even see if we, you know, make this super green or something, we should really see the colors come out of it. Okay, so yeah, it's doing definitely a little more. Um, with the overdriving, it's gonna make anything that's super light, you know, as you can see, as we come down on that emissive amount, we're getting more of a, you know, a greenish hue, uh, which will of course be, you know, natural for it to happen. So we can really control the way this works. Now, none of this was possible in the old system. This is all only possible because now we are driving the entire thing with our material system. And when you have a material system as robust and powerful as we have in Stingray, um, it makes a lot of sense to do this all within the material and not within the particle system. So uh, it's, it's a much better system. It is a little more complicated, there's no question about it, but the overall benefits are obvious, right? Like we can really control a lot of different things here um, that we wouldn't have been able to control in the old way. So, um, and what's really nice is once you get a nice graph like this, you can copy this graph and paste it anywhere you want and create multiple particle effects using the same graph. So let's go ahead and do that actually. Let's go ahead and go create a particle effect and let's call this uh, fire uh, new two, okay? And I happen to have another billboard to use here. So we can take this fire new two and let's back out, let's grab our texture. And um, actually, I'm sorry, I have to do one other thing first. So I'm gonna go FX, um, new billboard. And in here, in this particle effects new, again, we have to change the billboard to use that same material. So we're just gonna use this material, okay, uh, in here. So, but before we can do that, if we just drag it here, it'll just be the exact same effect. So what we're gonna wanna do is go right click, create empty material, okay? And we're gonna call this uh, fire underscore new two, okay? And instead of using an empty, as we have here with the parent resource, we're gonna drag fire new two into that parent resource. Okay, so now it's using the same parent resource, but it's not the same, okay? This is an instance now, okay? And what that means is that we can now plug into this guy a different texture. So let's back out, let's go textures, let's grab our fire sheet, and let's plug that one into here. And now, very quickly, we can save this guy. Let's set our size to something more reasonable, like one and one. And we can change our color to, uh, well, we're actually gonna remove the color because we're not using that anymore. We have our material using the fire new two. Uh, I'm sorry, we're not. We're gonna use fire new two. Save that. 
And because Fire New 2 is referencing Fire New, we are going to be able to change this material to the fire sheet. So when we place this guy down, we're going to have a different fire. So I'll probably have to explain that one more time because that's a little complicated and I want to make sure you fully understand what I just said. Um, so let's go through that one last time. Okay. But as you can see, we can completely separately control this guy from that one. So we can make this one run faster. We could make the emissivity amount higher. Oh, that's because the particle effect is still not set to lifetime. So I'm just going to go ahead and here and set it to lifetime so that it doesn't run out on us. Okay. So, uh, so here we can see that now the material is totally different, but it's driving the same values, right? We still have our rows, we still have our columns, we still have our frames per second, we have our emissive amount, we have our emissive tint. All the stuff we did in this first one, we were able to easy run into this one, okay? But it's running a different animation. So if we had one that had like, you know, 10 rows and 10 columns, this would still work because we have this column adjustment, right? So we can make this work for any UV animation now. Um, and we have a lot of nice controls to deal with UV animations. Um, and it's all driven from this one material because the way the material system works. So like I said, I wanted to explain this one last time uh, so that you're fully understanding what's going on here. Okay, so inside of Fire New, we have a billboard visualizer. The billboard visualizer is referencing Fire New 2, but Fire New 2 is using the template of Fire New because we're now see up in this parent resource it is driven off Fire New. So what that means is it's gonna pick up all the properties, but is staying as a separate instance of that material. Um, and it's just driving off the same parameters. So very, very powerful way to handle this, this kind of thing. And what's really nice is we can even adjust, uh, you know, everything individually, and it's still using the exact same shader graph. So if you notice it's saying up here, make unique. Instead, this is, a, a, in other words, if we look at the first one, we'd see that it says open shader graph, but on the second one, it says make unique. The reason is it is being driven from this one. And unless you, if you wanna edit this, you would actually edit this, okay? Whereas this one, if you wanted to kind of separate it out, you could hit make unique, but you don't really wanna do that because if you make it unique, then it's not driving off the same parameters. See, if we go into the, into the parent resource and edit the shader graph, oops. I guess it's open already, sorry about that. So if we go in here and then say, I don't know, um, change emissive amount to emissive amount, uh, well, what else could we do in here? Um, just trying to think of a way to show this to you. Um, let's just add another another material variable just for for uh, making it easy to, to in, you know, to show you here, I'm going to go material variable, and I'm just going to leave this called material variable because I'm not going to actually keep this. If I hit save here, we'll see that both of them get updated. And if we look here, we'll see that we now have this material variable input as well as on the first one. So that's the benefit of keeping them parented because now we don't really have um, two shader graphs being compiled. We have one shader graph being compiled and anything we make an edit to will automatically be picked up by the others. Okay, so uh, just something to really kind of take note of um, as to why it's a benefit to not say um, make unique. Once we make this unique, whatever we edit on this one is its, its own edit and this one will have its own shader graph and it'll be its, a completely separated resource. So that's what that make unique button will do. But in this case, we don't really wanna do that, okay? So I'm just gonna go back into our material. And at this point, I think I've pretty much explained the entire concept. Um, and I'm hoping that you've been able to follow along because uh, this is really cool and really powerful and um, you know very unique to Stingray, which makes uh, you know all this you know, just another really cool thing that Stingray can do that, you know, a lot of other engines kind of struggle with. Um, and it makes it so easy on the user. You know, this is just so powerful and so easy to use once you get kind of used to it. Um, but it is something to get used to. All right. So I really hope uh, that this tutorial taught you something. Um, one other thing. Uh, yeah, I should really explain this really last uh, thing really quick. Um, if you did not want to drive uh, a flipbook, okay, and you just wanted to use a standard material, okay, you would just simply have to take this 
and plug this directly into here and forget the flipbook, okay? And this would now be just presenting a texture, okay? So this obviously is five rows and five columns, so it's going to look a little funky, but you could plug any you know material into here and that's all that it would require. So this would be how you would do a standard uh, particle texture. But um, in this case, we're doing an animation, which is just a step more and a little bit cooler. So I thought you guys might like to see how that works. All right. So I hope this tutorial was useful to you in showing you some of the new powers and benefits of using um, the new billboard and how to kind of make use of it and how to come to grips with it. It is a little more complicated, but as you can see, it gives you a lot more power and a lot more capability. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and conclude this tutorial and say thank you very much for watching. Uh, please do leave any questions, comments, or concerns in the comment section. All right. Thank you so much, and I will talk to you on the next tutorial.